So this is a Maxim 150R that we picked up about a year ago. It ran, it just had a smoking engine. Uh, has beaker brake technology. You can see how they used uh, a beaker for their master cylinder. A lot of stuff rigged. You can see it's been in a front end hit. We're going to try to later ratchet strap the back to the tr to a tree and then try to come along the front out. That should work. We may have to cut some parts to make it bend back out and then re-weld them. But we have all new A-arms, all new bolts. We have a new rack, new brakes. We're going to put some headlights from aux beam on here. So we're going to set up the GoPro and do a time lapse. We're going to pull this thing apart and get ready to install the whole new front end parts and get the motor swapped over to it. So she's tacked all together. Now we'll get our grub on and then we can, I can fully weld all this. And then next we'll be starting installing the front end. So we finally got all of our parts for the old Maxim 152R. Um, we already put one side together, got the A-arms and everything put on. So now we can uh, dress out the other side and put our steering rack in. Then we're gonna probably cut this pipe out right here and just add another straight piece of pipe or maybe even a pipe that's up a little bit to give us leg room. So after we mount all this, we'll mount our seat next to find out how much room we have, what we gotta cut out. Then we got to cut various things out like this old footrest with the shifter on it and the pedals and everything. So a lot to do, a lot to do. So every one of these front end components came from Go Power Sports. They sell everything in the world for 150. They sell the bushings, uh, the plastic bushings as well as the insert bushings. They sell everything. So everything will be new on this. Get back here. And the deuce is running out, so now we'll have two twin in, uh, V twin buggies to ride. This one won't have reverse because uh, we bought a Dana transaxle and we wasn't going to put on this, but we want to put it on the twin engine and it gets the Kohler that we've had forever. So we'd rather keep it for a bigger build. So the 670 we never had to reverse and it rarely was a problem. So this will be even lighter and have uh, the same amount of power. So I would imagine this one would spin around a lot easier. No. You got the nuts for that over there? Yeah. I'll need that. Uh, Should be laying right there. Some washers, can't you? That looks right. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, I guess it's good. We just got to hold this one. Yeah, so the way, I don't know what rack this Maxim had on it, but we're going to have to cut this mount off. Then we can bolt this one up and clamp the other one to it and weld it in place. So we might as well go ahead and cut everything we're going to have to cut, uh, which will be this foot thing. We've got to cut these pedals off. Get all this crap cut. Think you mounted up here on top and you can just trim that plastic piece out and sit down around it. Yeah. That works. You gotta cut the steering shaft off of it. Have to cut this lock. Thing. Yeah. What? Well, um, completely clean it up and then you can just put it Why don't we flip it the other way where you see you get lock? Yeah. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, you said know, make you a hole in the top of that plastic plate. Yeah, I'll give me a socket for that. Crap, too scared to fall. Okay, that's heavy. You're not scared of them, I just look at oh, them. <laughs> If you're not scared of them, then hold your mouth near them. Just hold it open. I Let will. I'll around. lick it next time. Alright, so we haven't used the tubing bender in like six months probably like yeah so uh, we forgot there's a rod that runs beside the cylinder that t you can draw on for like how much needs to be sticking out for a 90 being and back when we was learning it I remembered which line was the 90 but where we marked so much we need to clean it off and remark all of our, our bend lines but we over bent this one or didn't bend this one we didn't bend this one enough yeah it's just a hair bit off and um, quantum machinery group and Sigmund makes these big, you know, 90 pieces, and we can see how much where our bend is off. And we got my jack handle, and you can just tweak it a little bit. This one we need to bend it out some. We over bend it because we thought one line was 90, and it was actually a line before it. So my jack handle fits perfectly in there. He's going to give some tugs on it, and it'll. And we got to clamp down with these Sigmund clamps. It works out more. And we're just seeing how the line a little bit more. That's perfect. Good. Yep. Mm, a little bit more. Pull it off completely. Go in the hair. Yes, sir. That's close enough yeah, to so, these Sigmund clamps are sweet. Well, this whole table. Is, but, so now we can, uh, and we're relearning this whole tubing bender. We knew this would happen once we stopped using it for so long. I didn't want to stop because me and Becca had a down pat. We could mark a whole piece of tube out, bend it all, and then just cut off our excess. No, we cut off our excess before we could bend it out perfect. But where we forgot all of our measurements, we have to relearn all that. So now we have to cut a little bit off this because we made it a little bit too long and then we can clamp them down on the table and weld them together. Oh, you got two. Yeah, we, got a, we couldn't bend the full, of course, so these will be welded together like so. After we get them cut to the right After we get them cut to the right length. We took a piece of PVC and made us this so we can draw lines all the way across you know, around it, pretty handy. 
So we bought a top link for a tractor and we cut it in half and this has a heim joint that threads in as deep as you want it, a big heavy duty three quarter heim joint. And I like this because it has the ears already built onto it so you don't gotta use spacers to get full pivot. So this will be our center pivot point. We're doing the same suspension like a deuce. It'll be a semi-independent suspension. So it'll be able to rock side to side as well, up and down. So um, we can notch this on the pipe notcher, slide it up and weld it also on the front of our engine swing arm. Alright guys, well we got the <clears throat> engine set up all built and all together other than mounting that brake caliper. We're going to use a 150cc style caliper, we use the 150cc style wheels and also Go Power Sports has the hubs for these wheels for a one inch live axle. This is like a real, really large four bolt pattern uh, for the GY6 style carts. So Go Power Sports has those wheels and the hubs as well as the axle, the axle collars, axle bearings, and we did a 62 sprocket. We welded the hub on because of the uh, CR80 incident where the nuts back their stuff out, um, which that's a lot more power than we're probably running on this. Actually, it's probably about the same, but we was pretty aggressive on that bike with a clutch. Um, but yeah, this engine section looks sick. I'm really happy with it. Um, now, on the next video, we can mount it up to the frame, get the hoop that goes around the engine that houses the shocks built, mount the gas tank from Brad Hill and all that good jazz. So this thing, I think it's going to handle awesome. It's going to handle just like the Deuce. Probably have as much suspension travel as the Deuce. We're using, again, 150cc style shocks on this. Uh, it's kind of the theme. We're keeping it all 150 uh, GY6 style go-kart parts. But I really like it. Here you guys go. A good up-close shot of it. I like that engine riser being so aggressive. I think it just adds a lot to this uh, whole swing arm. The reason we did the engine riser so high was just to make sure we had a lot of clearance for the brake. Those uh, brakes have a uh, e-brake, a parking brake style fixture coming off of them and they can get in the way of some things. But I think it looks awesome. It's gonna be strong. We're gonna add some things in these big open hose I'm getting on the laser cutout right now. But yeah, I really like the way it looks. Uh, of course, I got this Heim joint at Royal King. I don't like the quality of it. It's super stiff. I know it'll work its way, you know, looser and I can oil it. But Go Power Sports has some high quality three quarter inch Heim joints. If you guys are interested in replicating this or building your own semi-independent suspension, we will do a few more go-karts like this because it's just such a quick build and you can have an awesome travel in, on suspension. Guys, real quick before we get off here, I can't say enough about this Sigmund table from Quantum Machinery Group. It is an absolute honor to have this table. It is complete baller status. Uh, I think, and a lot of people will agree with me, this is the world's strongest weld table absolutely overkill in the thickness and hardness of this table 
but we are in love with it. We can't, I can't believe that we have a piece of equipment like this. I never would have imagined. Weld doesn't stick to it. It's just, it's amazing. So a huge shout out to Quantum Machinery Group for hooking us up with the weld table. And of course, always thank you Go Power Sports for, for helping us to be able to do this channel with the parts and the uh, support you guys give us. Yeah, this is going to be an awesome build. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section below. And guys, we'll see you on the next one. God bless. Redbeard's Garage is powered by GoPowerSports.com. GoPowerSports has a huge amount of awesome go-kart and mini bike parts. And when making your purchase, use the Redbeard discount code in the upper right-hand corner of your shopping cart to grab yourself a sweet deal. Hit that subscribe button and make sure the notification bell is on so you'll never miss another episode. And go check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Pinterest to stay up to date with the channel. Guys, always come back to Redbeard's Garage. I'm out.